it's Panasonic time. So come on over here and let's take a look at the HPX 600 right here. Uh, the first thing you're going to notice is it's got a proper tripod plate. All right, You don't have to screw two little screws from your tripod wedge in directly into the bottom of your camera. That's kind of frustrating uh, for, for me. I like to have a nice tripod plate where I can slide the camera back and forth to get it level on the tripod. A couple other important physical features, XLR inputs. It's a news gathering, it's a news gathering camera. You're going to get out there and you're going to have no problem shooting uh, wherever you show up. You don't have to say, oh, will you accept footage from my this camera or that camera? It's Panasonic P2, so you can record either in DVC Pro HD or you can record in their higher quality AVC Intra, iframe only recording codec. Pretty awesome. Something new coming out of Panasonic is right here. It's this viewfinder. Now, it is reminiscent of one of their competitors. We call it the giant sideways flipping LCD monitor. But the point is, you can stick your eye right up here, right, into the eyepiece, or you could flip this up sideways. And now you've got an LCD viewfinder. It's about three and a half inch screen like you're, like you're used to on some of the smaller cameras, but it's very nifty. It gives you great view of what you're looking at, and you know it's not here in the way of your camera controls. Very nice. Because there's some sophisticated mirror switching going on in order to change it from eyepiece mode to LCD viewfinder mode, right here on the front, right here on the front of the camera, you will find a, uh, a mirror switch to swap the left and right and the up and down so that when you've got your mirrors activated, it looks right for your eye. Then when you flip it up, flip your little mirror switch here and things look correct. All right, so that's some familiar stuff that you're used to. But really what's cool about this Panasonic camera is all of the new stuff. All right, one other thing that's important to note, this camera has been priced to sell. All right, it's competing with some $20,000 and $30,000 cameras. This is sub $20,000. Panasonic uh, uh, did a pricing structure where you can buy this camera for something like 14, 15 grand and, and add features to it as necessary. The first option board is AY, AG, YD, X600G, all right? Maybe you just want the camera or maybe you want the capacity to record proxy data. Proxy data means rather than recording at 100 megabits per second, you can record at something like 2 megabits per second. So simultaneously recording to your P2 card, you can also record on a tiny little SDHC card at a much lower bit rate. Say you've got to upload your dailies or FTP, you're in, you're, in, you're in Afghanistan, you're shooting for CNN, something crazy happened and they got to get the breaking news right now. And they don't have time to upload gigantic 100 megabit per second files. They want 2 megabit per second files. So that's what the proxy data is for. All right? There's an extra special reason to have proxy data that has to do with iPads that we'll get to later. But suffice it to say, this first option board, AGYDX600G, that's your proxy encoding board. It'll record proxy to your SDHC card at a lower bit rate than your, than your full res stuff. Next option board that you might want is an AGYA something something. You guys can see it better than I can. It's tough. It's tough over here. We love model numbers. We, know, we love letters in here. But if you were to call up and just say, Jesse, I want the SDI input option board, I would know what you mean. It's this second option here, the YA600G, SDH, HD SDI input board. What is that good for? Well, you may notice that I've got this red cable coming out of my camera right now. That's SDI output, right? Your broadcast codec stuff so you can connect to a switcher, connect to your nano flash, connect to your external recorders, connect to your monitors. Whoa, uh, now, now my DSLR guys, their ears are perking up. That's right, you can have a director or a producer looking at a nice large monitor so that they can direct you where to go because you've got a locking BNC connector and an SDI input. But if you buy this optional SDI input board, now you can do what's called a pool feed where in the past you'd have to drag a deck to the site. If somebody says, yeah, just show up, we've got an SDI out for you and you can record away, your camera is actually serving a dual purpose. When you purchase this SDI input option board, you take a pool feed right into the SDI input and now you can record the P2 and you can record the proxy version if you buy the proxy board and um, you're recording whatever it is they're feeding you. Very handy stuff. It makes your camera into both a camera and a deck. Pretty serious. Third option board, and this is my favorite, uh, it's actually not a board, it's a USB dongle, and it goes right here. Check this out. You open up this little port and you'll, you see, do you see? Look at that. See this guy right here? Little green light says it's on. That is Panasonic's Wi-Fi option. So this is the first camera that's making use of their Wi-Fi option. Now in the Canon C300, they had that 
they had that similar sort of USB Wi-Fi option, but the frame rate is so slow, right? You, you could do a little bit of wireless monitoring, you could do a little bit of camera control, you know, setting changes, but uh, the frame rate was really subpar. We weren't really happy with the frame rate. This little device is a totally different story. So this is the third option board. First, you need to get that proxy option board so that you can uh, create your proxies. Then you need to get this USB option uh, that, that does the sort of Wi-Fi transmission. There's one other option that I'd like to mention, and it's the AG SFU 62G. Ask for it by name or just say, Jesse, I want the variable frame rate software key. And so what I can do then is say, no problem. We sell you a little key. You upload a little uh, information to your, to your camera, and all of a sudden, you've got variable frame rates. What that allows you to do is recording at 24 frames per second, excuse me, playing back at 24 frames per second. You can crank your camera all the way up to 60 frames per second at 720, or 30 frames per second at 1080. This allows you to do better than two and a half times slow motion in 720p. It also allows you to do that fast motion stuff if you want to do some Charlie Chaplin stuff. So variable frame rate software option. You download a little key. It unlocks the capacity to do variable frame rate. You do not have to pay for this sort of cinematic option if all you're going to do is buy this camera and use it for news gathering. So those are some of the uh, additional options. The camera doesn't typically come with a viewfinder. So Verge, if you've got that viewfinder slide, let's pull that up. There we are. So AGCF 10G, that's an HD color viewfinder. It opens one way for LCD monitor viewing. Uh, the one that we've got here, the giant sideways flipping LCD view monitor, that is the CF15G. Pretty awesome. It's about 2,500 bucks. All right. And then, of course, you've got your standard old black and white, uh, black and white 21G viewfinder. You can get that with the camera for, I think, about $1,800. What is this? What, is, what sets this camera apart from other cameras? What makes it revolutionary and new? So, one thing is the cards that it records on. Currently, it records on standard old P2 cards. But in the near future, we're going to start recording on something called micro P2 cards. So what you're looking at is a PCMCIA sized P2 adapter. So the P2 adapter will accept SDHC sized P2 cards. So what's going on here? Are these SDHC cards or are they P2 cards? Well, the answer is they are P2 cards. And the difference is there's actually some RAID stuff built into them. So it can handle very, very high bandwidth, 100 megabit per second bandwidth uh, P2 information. Now, the, the, it just so happens that the slots built into this camera are P2 sized. So if you want to take advantage of these micro P2 cards, you slip the smaller micro P2 cards into the full sized P2 adapter, and this Panasonic HPX 600 is already compatible with, uh, with your little micro P2 cards. No big deal. Like I say, broadcast is back. We're very happy about it. We're taking pre-orders. The camera should be shipping by the end of this month. And as we mentioned earlier, you don't have to buy an obnoxious bundle. You can select which channels, which options you want, and only pay for those. So congratulations, broadcast guys. Panasonic's been thinking of you, and here is the result. Thank <laughs> you.